um, responded to this by, by basically canceling low altitude attacks and the alt, uh, only high altitude attacks were allowed after they realized that the Serbs had effective anti-aircraft defenses. Uh, and this meant basically high levels of inaccuracy and the inability to really hit Serb weapons with success. Um, over time, as it became clear this could be a long war and NATO risked humiliation, uh, the NATO attacks escalated their attacks on, on civilian targets and seemed to have deliberately targeted, targeted civilian targets. And it does appear that had the war lasted much longer, NATO was prepared to fully destroy the cities of Serbia. They didn't do that. Um, the damage was much lighter than that. The total number of uh, civilians killed was in the range of 500 to 2,000. Um, on the other hand, um, they were prepared to do that. They were not going, America was not going to risk humiliation in this war. It was prepared to do whatever it took, whatever the cost in human lives, to achieve it. And, um, so, so that was anticipated. And we now know that the main reason Serbia capitulated seems to have been the realization that their cities would be systematically destroyed and the natural unwillingness to allow that to happen. In any case, Serbia did agree uh, to American terms. Interestingly, the final terms they agreed to did not require uh, NATO occupy, occupation of Serbia. That was quietly dropped. Um, but they did agree to the terms, which were pretty much the terms they were ready to agree to at Rambouillet, right? Uh, not that different at all. NATO did field a peacekeeping force, which is still there. I was in uh, Kosovo last month and I saw it. It's uh, still largely a protectorate of NATO. Um, and under NATO tutelage, uh, Kosovo gained independence in 2008. Um, now let's look at basically the results of the war. Now in any humanitarian intervention, the key question is the humanitarian outcome. Well, the main effect of the, of the bombing basically was a tremendous increase in Serb atrocities. Up until uh, the NATO bombing, the number of Albanian civilians killed has never been estimated. It was probably in the range, I would guess, of about 500. It couldn't have been much higher than that because um, the total number of people killed on both sides, civilian and military, before the NATO bombing was 2,000. So my guess of, of Albanian civilians would be around 500. Okay. During the time of the Serb bombing, however, the total number of Albanians killed was 10,000. A tremendous escalation. Uh, there's very little doubt this was revenge attacks in response to the NATO bombing. The Serbs felt they had nothing to lose and were angry. Now, we should never uh, you know, whitewash or overlook the, the, the terrible atrocities that resulted here. 10,000 people killed is a lot. Uh, and the Serbs bear the primary moral responsibility for having orchestrated this calamity. But NATO bears responsibility too for having created a situation that virtually guaranteed augmented atrocities. Note, please that the Joint Chiefs of Staff had warned Clinton about this possibility in advance. They said one possible outcome of this is that the Serbs will engage in revenge attacks and will increase the humanitarian crisis. Did exactly that. Um, there's been some effort to suggest the Serbs would have done this even if there'd been no NATO bombing. Uh, there's really not, not a shred of evidence to support this. All right? uh, there's no evidence that the, the, these atrocities were inevitable. Indeed, we have good evidence the Serbs wanted a political settlement of this problem. The evidence basically is their implementation of the Holbrook Agreement. The evidence that they were negotiating seriously at Rambouillet. All that indicates that they were not intent on solving this through military force. They were open to a political settlement. It was the NATO bombing itself that caused the escalation of atrocities. That, I think, was the main effect of the bombing in humanitarian terms, was to bring about, create the conditions that led to a Serb escalation of atrocities. NATO does have to accept some moral, moral responsibility for that outcome. Another effect of the NATO bombing was, as I mentioned, civilian casualties directly attributable to the bombing, which estimates range from 500 to 2,000 killed. Now, is that a large number or a small number? Depends how you look at it. Compared, let us say, to the bombing of Dresden or Hiroshima or something like that, obviously it's very small. On the other hand, if compared to the number of people killed before the bombing, uh, by the Serbs, let us say, it, it's not that high. The number of people killed by the Serbs, the number of Albanian civilians killed by the Serbs before the bombing was about as high as the number of people killed by the bombing itself, right? So if we wish to look at the Serb killings of Albanians, um, you know, as, as a huge figure, and 500 killed is a huge figure, uh, then unfortunately the bombing did at least as much damage. Third, when NATO troops were in place and occupied Kosovo, they basically put the KLA in power throughout most of Kosovo, and the KLA proceeded to do what many had expected it would always do, which is to promptly start attacking the Serbs. 
between 500 and 700 Serbs were killed over the next seven months, and about two-thirds of the Serb population were ethnically cleansed. Um, about a quarter of a million people, or nearly a quarter of a million people, uh, mostly Serbs, but also Roma and other ethnic groups, uh, left Kosovo, um, of course, in response to these killings. And this is something of an ironic outcome. This was a war that, after all, was fought with the intent of demonstrating that ethnic cleansing is inadmissible as a way of settling ethnic conflict. And yet, NATO stood by and allowed ethnic cleansing on a vast scale when the war was over. That indeed was one of the um, legacies of this war. Um, today, I think there are about 100 or 150,000 Serbs in isolated enclaves uh, who still live there. Um, and uh, they now do have NATO protection. I think NATO took the view that it would be embarrassing if all the Serbs were cleaned out. And if uh, Kosovo really was ethnically clean, that would just be too embarrassing. And so some effort was made after several months to protect the remaining Serbs. But during the initial period, when most of the Serbs were being ethnically cleansed, very little NATO effort was made to protect them. And it got very little attention in the press. So all that was reported in places like The Economist and such. In any case, on balance, what one has to say is that this basically uh, was a humanitarian disaster. Okay? The uh, NATO intervention made things much worse than they were before. They did not resolve the problem, they made it worse. The problem could have been resolved in negotiations. A major point of people like Samantha Power is to suggest that any effort to negotiate with people like Milosevic is appeasement, it's an act of moral cowardice. But there's a problem here, which is this. If the US had been willing to negotiate seriously with Milosevic, far fewer people would have died. Surely that would have been a better outcome. Um, and so I think that basically one of the key problems in the humanitarian intervention paradigm, and this applies also to Bosnia, though I won't have time to discuss it at length, is that humanitarian interventions retain their ability to do tremendous damage. People forget that. It's always assumed that humanitarian intervention can only do good. Um, we've seen dramatic evidence that that's not the case. We've seen it in Kosovo. We've seen it in Bosnia. We've also seen it in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, let us not forget that um, basically the number of people who are believed to have died after the war began in uh, Iraq, uh, the estimates vary tremendously, but they range from 150,000 to well over a million. Uh, my guess would be probably a million is probably the best estimate. Uh, that's far higher than the number killed by Saddam Hussein during all of his years of rule. Uh, and in Afghanistan, as horrible as the Taliban were, and they were horrible, um, although to a large extent they were, you know, they were the result of groups that had previously been backed by the US, but that's another story. Um, this, despite the fact that they were horrible, things are probably worse now in Afghanistan than they were before, because at least under the Taliban there was security, something there is nothing like that now. And so I think people tend to forget, basically, that US intervention has tremendous damage, to, uh, tremendous <coughs> danger of doing damage. And let's not forget also, that the Save Darfur movement, which is calling for intervention in Darfur, also undermines, estimates the potential of that, any potential intervention in that case, to do harm, to make the situation worse than before. And let us not forget also, that the Save Darfur movement is not a peace movement. It is not calling for more peace in the world, it is calling for more war in the world, okay? Um, and so I think one of the things that we, what really needs to be brought back to progressives is a peace perspective, the idea that peace is preferable to war. That war itself, basically, is a horror to be avoided, if at all possible. Mm -hmm. And to get away from the idea that intervention is a benign force, even if we call it benign, that doesn't make it benign. And finally, the whole idea here is that, um, you know, my book is entitled First Do No Harm, and I think that, you know, there is some wisdom to the medical idea that before you undertake action, you weigh the costs and the benefits of it, and you accept the possibility that taking action can make things worse than before. It's almost never discussed. It's discussed in terms of horrible things are happening in Darfur, so we must take action. That doesn't follow, because action could make things worse. It did make things worse in Kosovo. It did make things worse in Iraq. Thank you. <gasps> yes, sir. I have a question. You have uh, not mentioned one conflict which I think you, I thought you might have mentioned which was the, the Rwanda genocide I mean surely if you went if you took your theory um, and followed it to its logical conclusion 
That's exactly what happened in Rwanda in a sense because nobody, including the